So we're at 7.2. We'll start on the bottom of page 26. 26, example 10. A rectangular room has a length of 18 feet and a width of 12 feet. A scale drawing is made that shows the length as 4.5 inches. So the first thing we should notice is that we have measurements in feet and measurements in inches. So that's really helpful when we have different units like that because it can give us a clue as to what to put on the top of our box. So we'll use the feet and the inches here. The next thing we should notice is that we have length and width. So we're going to use that as the side of our box. So we have a length of 18 feet for our room, so that will go here, and a width of 12 feet for the room. The drawing has a length of 4.5 inches, and we don't know the width. So we can use that now to set up our proportion, and we'll cross multiply 18 times x is 18x, and 12 times 4.5 is 54, then divide both sides by 18. And we get x is 3. Because this is x is in the inches column, we know our units should be 3 inches. So here we want to talk about the scale factor for part b. Scale factor is comparing the actual length of the room to the drawing. So here we know that we have a length of 18 feet and a length of 4.5 inches. So the problem is that we know that ratios should have the same units, and this does not. This has feet and inches. So our hint is that we should change everything to inches first. So let's look at this 18 feet. We'll do it kind of down here on the bottom. We know that one foot is 12 inches. So we're going to write another fraction here. Because the feet here is on the top, we want this other foot the one foot part to be on the bottom, and that leaves this 12 inches part to be on the top. And we do that because if we have a unit on the top and a unit on the bottom, they cancel out. So now we can multiply these fractions straight across. 18 times 12 is 216, and 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 216, oops, inches. So 18 feet is the same as 216 inches over 4.5 inches. Now again, the units match, one on top, one on bottom, so they cancel out. And we'll reduce this. We'll just divide the top and the bottom by 4.5. So 216 divided by 4.5 is 48, and 4.5 divided by 4.5 is 1. So we have a scale factor of 48 to 1. That means really that the room is 48 times as big as the drawing. A landscaper is designing a garden for a house not yet built. He needs to know the length of the shadow of the house. He is 6 feet and measures the shadow to be 8 feet. He knows the house will be 15 feet tall. How far will the shadow stretch at the same time of day? So in this problem, our units are all feet, so that doesn't help us as much. But we have um, two things. We have a man, and we have a house. And we also have the height and the shadow. So the height of the man is six feet and his shadow is 8 feet. The height, the height of the house is 15 feet. And we're trying to find how far will the shadow stretch. So that's our x. And our x will be in feet also because that's how the house was measured, the height of the house. So we'll set up our proportion. We'll cross multiply. 6 times x is 6x, 
and 8 times 15 is 120. Notice that when you have an equal sign between them, you cross multiply. If there's a multiplication sign between them, you multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. That's really important to get that straight in your head. We'll divide both sides by 6, and we get 20. And we know it's measured in feet, so we know the shadow will be 20 feet. A direct proportion is a proportion where both numbers increase or decrease together. So an example of this might be that as a person grows taller, their shoe size increases. So both numbers are going up together. An indirect or inverse proportion is one where the one number increases while another number decreases. So a real world example of this is a car trip. As your speed goes up, the time to get there goes down. So if you drive faster, your trip is shorter. Or if you drive slower, your time is longer. So because those numbers are going opposite directions, it's an inverse or an indirect proportion. Now before we go on, I want to um, point you out to one other thing. On the bottom of page 22 is a series of decimals and fraction relationships that you need to just know. You need to know that 0.25 is the same thing as 1 fourth, that 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half, that point 7, 5 is the same thing as 3 fourths, that 0 0.3 repeating is 1 third, and that 0 0.6 repeating is 2 thirds. We're going to use that as we continue.